Okay, continuing with heart muscle cells, we're going to do a little physiology review and answer the questions, what ways do ions get in and out of heart muscle cells, and what is a resting membrane potential, and what ways are action potentials produced? Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton, and I'm the noted anatomist. So basic cardiac electrophysiology is foundational to understanding cardiac function, things like rate and rhythm and the initiation of cardiac muscle contraction. So with that in mind, let's do a little review. A cell is like a salty banana. So here's a salt shaker and here's a banana. So on the outside, what does a salt shaker make? Sodium. Well, it dumps out sodium. And what's a banana known to have inside? Lots of potassium. A cell is like a salty banana. On the outside, there's lots of sodium and on the inside, there's lots of potassium. A heart muscle cell is like a salty banana. But we notice that there's lots of calcium on the outside of cells and lots of chloride, lots of bicarbonate. As a matter of fact, all ions have a higher concentration outside the cell, except for potassium, where there's a lot of potassium inside the cell, and potassium is always bound, or potassium ions are always bound to a negatively charged anion. This sets up a concentration gradient or a chemical gradient for the diffusion of ions where sodium wants to diffuse down its gradient. But ions need an open door to walk through a wall. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, here's a human, and we can't walk through walls, so that's why we invented doors. But a human can't walk through a wall if the doors are closed. So to walk through a wall, there must be doors, and they must be open. Ions need an open door to walk through the wall. So here's some ions, and there's a cell membrane or sarcolemma. Ions, because they're charged, cannot diffuse through the wall. They can't walk through the wall. So we put in doors. Those doors are called ion channels, but ions cannot go through the uh, ions cannot go through the channels unless the doors are open, and now they can go through. Where sodium and calcium have an influx, high concentration outside, they go through the open doors to the inside of the cell. Where we have for potassium, we have an efflux, high potassium inside diffuses down its gradient to move out of the cell. The negative sign on the VM indicates that the internal surface of the heart muscle cell membrane is negative relative to the outside. <clears throat> so here's a heart muscle cell and the cell membrane or sarcolemma is indicated. And look, on its internal surface, shing, it's negative 80 millivolts, which means the VM or the membrane voltage or the membrane potential is negative 80 millivolts for this heart muscle cell membrane. It's the electrical potential difference across the membrane when the cell is in a non-excited state. It's traditionally expressed by its value of inside relative to outside, and this cell membrane is called, it's polarized, okay? The VM is established and maintained primarily by potassium ions. Now, to demonstrate this, let's set up a, 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 an experiment. Let's say that there is a cell with high intracellular potassium and no extracellular potassium. And so what would the electrical chemical gradient look like? So here's our heart muscle cell, lots of potassium inside, no potassium outside. And for now, that cell membrane has no ion channels. There's no doors. And remember that all those potassium ions are bound to negatively charged anions. So there's this big concentration gradient. Potassium wants to move down its gradient from inside to outside the cell, but potassium cannot walk through walls. It's a charged anion, a charged ion, pardon me. So there's no electrical gradient. So the uh, membrane, the VM is zero millivolts. What happens when we introduce only potassium leak channels? like this. Now, what's a potassium leak channel? Well, it's that mem that that channel, the IK1 channel, when we're going to be talking about action potentials for cardiomyocytes. Every single cell in the body has these IK1 channels. They're the one that establishes the resting membrane potential. Now, what is a potassium leak channel? It's simply a door in the wall, the cell membrane, but it's always open until we depolarize the membrane, but at rest, these, these channels are always open and they're specific for only potassium. And potassium can go either direction. But in this thought experiment, we set this up so that there's no potassium outside, so potassium goes down its concentration gradient. We've lost a, a potassium ion and we're leaving a negatively charged anion behind. Let's do it again. Now watch what happens to the concentration electrical gradients as we continue to do this. 
we're still going down the gradient, but we're losing the strength of the concentration gradient and we're gaining an electrical gradient because we keep losing positively charged ions, potassium, through this potassium leak channel, leaving negatively charged anions behind. And so as we continue to do this, we finally reach a point here where the electrical gradient, the negative charges pulling potassium back into the cell and the concentration gradient, potassium going down its gradient out of the cell become equal. This is the equilibrium potential, the Nernst potential. This is what shows that it takes about 88 mil, negative 88 millivolts to prevent potassium from diffusing out of the cell. So this is now why when we do a voltmeter on the internal surface of a cardiac cell, it measures at negative 88 millivolts. So the VM or resting membrane potential, it's established because of the unequal distribution primarily of potassium ions across the membrane and that membrane at rest is permeable to potassium ions more so than sodium, calcium, chloride, or any other ion. Even though sodium and chloride and calcium contribute a little bit to the resting membrane potential as does the sodium potassium pump, that's why for a cardiac muscle cell it's at negative 80 millivolts. But almost, but take a look, almost the rest of it, of the rest of that VM is, main, is caused because of the unequal distribution of potassium and the permeability of potassium because of those potassium leak channels. The VM is established and maintained by potassium ions. Action potentials are produced by ionic currents flowing through ion channels. Here are some ions and here are their doors, the ion channels. And when they're open, we have the flow of ions through these ion channels. That's these currents are what produces an action potential. Inward ionic currents depolarize the VM. It's the influx of positive ions that creates a less negative potential membrane inside. The outward ionic currents repolarize the VM. That's an efflux of positive ions, potassium, that creates a more negative potential inside. And you see that letter I, that stands for currency or current intensity or just I. It stands for current in physics. So the I and A literally means the sodium current that is caused by a sodium channel. ICA is the calcium current, which is a doorway or an ion channel specific for calcium to flow from one side of the membrane to the other, causing a calcium current. IK is the potassium current for the movement of an outward current for potassium. Okay, so here is a contractile cardiomyocyte. It's got a VM of negative 80 millivolts. What would happen to the VM if we open the sodium channel? Well, take a look what happens. There's an influx of sodium down its gradient. We've added positive ions to a negative VM, so the membrane becomes less negative or more positive. So the VM was negative 80 millivolts, and now it depolarizes to positive 20 millivolts. So what would happen to this VM if we open a potassium channel at this point? Well, look, there's an efflux of potassium down its gradient. We lose these positively charged potassium ions, leaving negatively charged anions behind. The membrane becomes more negative or less positive. So the VM was, negative, was positive 20 millivolts. It now repolarizes to negative 80 millivolts. So a little note. There's no measurable change or very little measurable change in ion concentration inside or outside the cell, but it's the movement, the picomoles of few ions across the membrane that is so important. What happens with though, with those small amounts of sodium inside and the small amounts of potassium outside the cell because we've moved these ions? Well, that's where the sodium potassium ATPase or sodium potassium pump comes into play. Using primary active transport or basically the energy of ATP, sodium ATPase pumps three sodium against its gradient outside the cell and pumps two potassium ions inside the cell against its gradient. And so sodium potassium pump restores the sodium and potassium concentrations inside and outside the cell. If this is you, right now. Don't, don't worry. Go to YouTube, go to the Noted Anatomist channel, go to the playlist tab, look for the playlist physiology principles and watch the resting membrane potential. I'll go through more of that in detail in that video. And that my friends is a little physiology review in a nutshell.